Hi all, this is the second video in this series of integrating Syncfusion components into NASP.NET Core MVC project. Here we will be discussing how to design a form using Syncfusion components and also we will be showing how to register for a free community license from Syncfusion. Now back to the category controller. Now first of all, I will start with this create new view here which is just to create new categories. Now as we all know by default MVC project are using bootstrap components. That's why we have the bootstrap style sheet reference up here. See? But in this project I will be using Syncfusion components wherever possible. Now let's navigate the create view and its action method responsible for this view here. So category controller inside that we have this get action method create and it is returning a view here and it should be the inside this folder category. So here we have the view with the same name as that of the action method create and this is what we are showing inside this view here. Now I'm going to replace this normal text box with Syncfusion text box. So go to the documentation here. So here we have the text box. Now let's check what we have inside this getting started session. See all of these imports for the tag helper and style sheet are already done. Now we just need to add this element instead of the normal text box. So I will just copy this text box from here and let's replace that here in this view. So first of all we have to remove this label and this text box control for the title. Instead of that we can paste the text box here. Now for any Syncfusion component they recommend a unique ID. So I will name this component as title. Now the placeholder will be title itself so I will copy that from this uh, validation component here. We will be talking about validation in a bit. All of the components or elements inside this form is created with an HTML controller using the model that we have here. This is what we have mentioned during creating the controller and because of the scaffolding mechanism it creates the controller with required views inside this category folder. We want to use the same model properties for creating the controllers here. We don't want to take away of the benefit of reusing the model for creating views. So in order to achieve the values from this model into this text box we can do this value which is a property of this Syncfusion component and we just need to pass title here like we have done with normal HTML controls. You see here we have the tag ASP4 which means the value of this text box is retrieved from the property icon of this model here which is what we are doing with this Syncfusion component. By passing the value from this property we are reusing the model for creating corresponding HTML elements. Now in order to see the available properties of the Syncfusion component text box you can go through the API reference here. Now within this search box we can type text box and here we have the text box under inputs. Click on it then you could see the available properties for this component. You see here we have the property value which set the content of the text box. Similarly we have various properties to customize the component as per our requirement. Now let me save the changes here and let's build this project. Now let's check how this Syncfusion component looks like. You see here we have the text box for title and which is different from the default HTML text boxes here from Bootstrap. I want to talk about this warning here. This is showing because we are using the Syncfusion components without registering the license. For now let's ignore that we will get into that in a bit. Now let's change the appearance of this text box like this one here. First of all the reason of this text box appearance is due to the default style sheet from uh, Syncfusion which is what we have imported inside the layout page here. This one material.css. Instead of that we will be using a different style sheet. So I will just comment this style sheet reference here. Now back to the documentation. Now inside this appearance session here you could see the built-in themes. Now for our project we'll be using bootstrap dark theme. With that here we have the corresponding style sheet reference. So this dark theme will give a dark background for all of the Syncfusion components. As I mentioned the current dark background is from this uh, extension here. From now onwards I will disable this extension for this website and then we'll be making use of this style sheet so first of all I will just copy this link reference and let's paste that here. Instead of this style sheet we have to use this one. Build the project back to the application. Boom that's it. 
So here we have a Syncfusion component and it is having a dark background. Now the entire web page background is not changed to the dark mode. We have to do that by custom CSS. For that back to the global start sheet here, side.css. So here we have the body. First of all, let's set the background color to this custom color here. And then I will set the foreground color to white. So that will solve the problem for now. Further customization will be done as we go forward. Now we have stuck with the placeholder that we have provided inside the text box here. You see, it's always showing here. Instead of that, either it should work as a placeholder or it should work as a label as we can see here. With that, back to the text box documentation. Now if you scroll to the bottom, you could see this session floating labels meaning the placeholder value that we have provided will act as a label for the text box. For that, we can make use of the property float label type. You could see the same API property inside this API documentation here. So back to the project, floating label type to always. Let's build the project back to the view. Boom, that's it. Still the value is title, which is because of directly passing it as a string instead of this, just pass like this. Model dot title. Let's build the project again, back to the view. Here we are getting a null object reference error. Let's check the corresponding action method. So here we have the action method, which is returning the view. And inside this view, we are not returning an instance of the category model which is what we are expecting with the model of this view here. So I will do this. I will just return a new fresh instance of the model, new category. Build the project, back to the view. Now it works perfectly fine. Now compared to the default text boxes here, this Syncfusion text box looks somewhat smaller. In order to fix that, let's look what we have inside the documentation here. Go to this size mode under appearance, as mentioned here, we can make the components look bigger. We just need to add this class to the body of the application. So based on the absence or presence of this class, Simfusion components will be made bigger. Okay, so let's paste the class here. And we have to do one more thing as mentioned here. We just need to change the overall font size to X large. So let's copy paste this to the global style sheet. Boom, that's it. Now, if you go back to the view, here we forgot to add the name attribute for this control, which is one of the important thing for a text box or a form control because the data from this text box or input controls will not be posted to the corresponding post action method of this controller. Here we have the post action method and we are expecting this title property here. It will only be posted if the corresponding HTML element is having the same uh, name attribute. So we have to pass the name here title. But you might be thinking it is better to use normal HTML elements instead of Syncfusion components because we are adding attributes which are not needed with the default method because of this ASP4 attribute. The default ASP4 attribute will append name and value from the map property to the corresponding input control. So if you are a lazy person like me, or if you have thought like that, Syncfusion has a solution like this one here. Here we have the attribute ASP4. Let me copy paste that here. Instead of this ASP, we just need to use this prefix EJS. That's it. Now we don't have to separately mention the name and value of the control. It will be applied because of this attribute here. And we don't have to use this at the rate syntax. It is already assumed. Instead of using two HTML elements, here we are using single Syncfusion component. Now like this, we can use rest of the form elements from Syncfusion alternatives. So let's replace this icon controls with Syncfusion components. So I will just copy paste this for icon here and let's change these attributes accordingly. So here it is. Now it's necessary to have a considerable gap between these form elements. Now currently the controls are wrapped within this bootstrap class form group. Instead of that, I will use this bootstrap class margin bottom of the read three. So I will be applying the same class for rest of the form elements inside the application. Now, before going forward, I know this red license warning is really bothering you. So let's look how to configure the app for a community license from Syncfusion. So here we are inside the official website. Now click on free trial here. At the end, you could see a section called free products. 
So here we have the community license, which offers a free license for organizations with maximum five users and maximum $1 million revenue. I hope most of us are eligible for this community license. So click on download here. Now we have to sign in with the credentials of either of these platforms. So I will go for LinkedIn. Now, if you don't have a LinkedIn profile, please make one and use the same credentials and then sign in. Then accept the terms mentioned here. Now, as a final step, you have to provide the company name and phone number. Now, I want to remind you something here. Make sure to provide a valid contact number. They might want to know whether you are eligible for the community license or not. Now, accept the terms and conditions from Syncfusion. Now, click on create. So here we have successfully created the account. Now in your email inbox, there will be a new email with the welcome message. And here we have the link for creating a password. This password is not necessary for the MVC application here, but for future login operations, you need this password. So make sure to create one. Now currently there is no license added to this account. Now to add the community license, you can go to this uh, URL here, downloads forward slash community license. I have given the link in video description. So here we have the message saying, congratulations on claiming your free community license. Now expand this drop down here, go to my dashboard, then under license and downloads, go to downloads and keys. So here we have the community license added to our account. Now we'll be using the keys here to configure the app. Now we have to register the license inside this MVC application. The documentation here will guide you through the process. So here we have the session for licensing. First of all, we have to generate the license keys, which is just by uh, selecting this option here, get license key. Now we have to specify the platform, which is ASP.NET Core. Now we have to select the version that we are using, which is clearly mentioned inside the uh, reference that we have used inside the layout page. See here we have the version. Make sure to select the same version from this drop down here. Click on get license key. So here we have the generator license. Now we have to register the license with the key that we have just created. So here we have the steps for .NET 6 and which is here. So we just need to copy this, paste that inside the program.cs file. Now let's copy paste this license key. Now let's build the project and let's check whether we have the same warning or not. Boom, that's it. Now let's find a Syncfusion alternative for this type control here. Actually, it is meant to save or feed whether the category is of the type expense or income. For that, normally we use a group of radio buttons so that we can select one option at a time from multiple options. In this documentation here, it is mentioned under this button group here. As you can see, this controller is used to group buttons like this. But instead of buttons, we can use radio buttons also, which is mentioned inside this selection and nesting. For single selection from multiple options, we can group radio buttons like this here. Each radio button is coming with a label along with it. And the entire radio groups is wrapped with a div with the class E button group. So I'll be using the same group of radio buttons for this type control here. First of all, I will copy paste the demo code. So here we have the existing controls for the type. Let's replace that with the copied code. Here we have three radio buttons. Instead of that, we only need two. So let me remove the extra one here. So as you can see, type is equal to radio and we need an ID and we have to assign same name for all radio buttons inside the group. Then only the corresponding value will be posted to the corresponding property type here. So we have to use the name as type for both of these radio buttons. Now for the first radio button, the value will be expense we have to show the same inside the label beside it. So here we go. Now for the second radio button, the value will be income. For radio button, we need one more property called checked. And we want to assign a Boolean value to mark whether this radio button is checked or not. For that, we can compare the value inside the model. So inside the model, we have the property type. If it is equal to expense, then this radio button will be checked. 
let's wrap the entire c sharp code within parentheses now by default the value of the property type is expense it will be the case in most of the transaction so that's why we have set it as expense as a default value now let's copy paste this for this uh, income radio button here instead of expense and let's change this to income let's build the project and back to the application boom that's it now I want to show this group of radio buttons as a force element inside the form. So back to the form, let's move up here in the order. And instead of the class form group, we're going to use this class here. Now, as you can see, we need some customization for this group of radio buttons. Like the shadow when we select a radio button from the group. Now in order to customize the control, I'm going to add a custom CSS class here, custom RBT group. Now let's define the class inside the global style sheet here. This is for radio button group. So here we go first of all, we will assign the width 100% and each of the radio button inside that will be having a 50% width. And then here we have some extra styles to make it uh, more appealing. Don't worry, I will be providing the complete project repository link in video description. You can copy it from the build the project and back to the application. Boom, that's it. Now let's try to submit this form so that we can create new categories. So first of all, I will select the expense category here. So the first category will be travel. Now through this icon control here, you can provide the emojis like you can see here. So in order to provide an emoji here, you can use the shortcut on your windows, hold windows key, then dot or period simple. Unfortunately, in my system, it's not working since I'm using the latest Windows 11 OS. So if you are facing the same problem, you can go to this website here, Emojipedia, and then provide a description of the icon that you are looking for. So here we go. Let me copy this and paste in here. Now click on create. Boom, that's it. So hope you can see this category here, travel with the icon that we have provided. We'll be replacing this normal HTML table with Syncfusion grid, which is having plenty of features that you can benefit from. So we'll be getting into that in a bit. Now you can verify whether this record is inserted to the table or not. So here it is. Now let's create one more category of the type income. It will be salary. Now let's copy an image from here. I will look for type so that it will imply something or uh, professional. Submit the form. That's it. So the radio button group is working perfectly fine. Now before replacing this HTML table with the grid component, let's deal with the edit operation or update operation. So then here we have the hyperlink edit and here we have the edit form with corresponding category details. Now this view here is different from the create view that we have just designed here. Okay, this is designed with the create view here and this edit form is designed with a separate view under this folder category here. Okay, and you can see the corresponding get and post action methods for edit operation. As always, I will be combining this both create and edit operation into one action method and same in case of the view also. Let me show you that here. First of all, I will be removing this edit action methods, both get and post. And let me rename this create action methods here as add or edit. Let's do the same for this post action method also. Now let's delete this edit view here. And let's rename this create view to add or edit. Now we have to modify these hyperlinks here. So back to the index view. Here the action method will be add or edit. And let's do the same for the edit hyperlink here. So both of these hyperlink will make a get request to the same action method add or edit. So we have to modify the corresponding get action method accordingly. First of all, I'll be adding a parameter ID. By default, its value will be zero. So for create hyperlink here, we are not passing any parameter ID. You could see the ID here passed to the add or edit. So if ID is not passed, the default value zero will be taken. So if ID is equal to zero to the view add or edit, we'll be passing a fresh instance of the model. If that's not the case, we have to return a form for the edit operation. So in that case, we have to return the category model for the given ID. For that, I will just copy paste this line now in order to return the category for the given ID, I could do this underscore context dot categories dot find method can be called 
inside that we just need to pass the id now let's build the project and back to the application here now let's try this create new link it's perfectly fine returning a fresh form let's try the same for this edit operation boom that's it here we have the form populated with the given category id one let's try the same for this income record yes now we have to modify the view add or edit accordingly now most importantly we have to modify this form post action method here we just renamed it to add or edit now this form is used for both insert and update operation. For edit or update operation, we need an extra property which was an optional for the insert operation. If you check the uh, post action method here, we have binded these properties from the form category ID, title, icon and type. For category ID, there is no input control inside the form. So while posting this form, the value corresponding to the ID will not be posted to this action method here. It was not required for the create or previous operation. Since we are combining both insert and update operation, in case of edit operation, it is a must. With that, let's add an input hidden field here. Name it exactly as the uh, property name category ID. And let's assign the value from the model. Now previously while designing the form for insert operation, I forgot to replace this button with the Syncfusion button. So let's do that before going forward. So you could see the documentation uh, for button here. Here we have the corresponding tag EJS button. So let's replace this enter div with the button EJS button. ID will be submit. And this button should be of the type submit and the content which is to be displayed inside the button will be submit so here we have the submit button i want to change the color of this button which is what explained inside types and styles here we just need to assign corresponding color class to this property css class these class names are similar to the bootstrap color class names we have to show the button in green color so i will copy paste this property here back to the app that's it. Now let me remove these extra headings here. And let's increase the grid column to seven here. So which is taking more than uh, what we need. So I will do one thing. Let's reduce the width assigned to the uh, content in layout view. So here we have the layout. Let me collapse this top nav here. So here we have the bootstrap class container and we need to add a top margin here. So margin top of the range five and let's wrap everything within a div with the class row now let's justify the content at sender now for the content we'll be taking only uh, 10 columns so call md10 now let's move this content to this column here now rest of the rearrangement can be done inside the edit view here let's wrap everything within a div called widget this is a custom class that we are going to define now let's assign maximum padding from all the sides and let's move the form into the new div now let's define this class widget so here we have the style sheet side.css so here we have the widget class set the border radius and background color boom here we go now since we have a small form here we have left a considerable space on right side in order to fill up that i'm going to add an icon to fill up the space available here which is also available in syncfusion you can see that under appearance icons it contains most frequently used icons the documentation here clearly explains how you can use these icons now let me enable this uh, dark mode here now you know what Syncfusion component supports other icon libraries also. Hence, I'm gonna stick with phone over some icons, which is my go-to icon collection. So let's grab corresponding CDN reference, phone over some icons, CDN reference. Most of the time I use cdnjs.com. Now let's copy this all.min.css tag here. Let's paste that inside the layout page just before this site.css. Now back to the add or edit view. We already took seven columns here. Now we have left five columns. So let's use that for the uh, phone awesome icon. 
inside that we'll be having a div with the class that we have just created which is widget now we just need to find an appropriate phone over some icon for category so go to the corresponding website phoneoversome.com forward slash icons and i will be looking for this icon here shapes this one which is more suitable for indicating uh, categories click on this i tag it will copy to the clipboard and paste it over here now to enlarge this icon we can use this phone over some class for to excel build the project back to the app excuse me <laughs> sorry it is showing just beneath the form so here we have the call md7 div so let's place it after that now for the proper alignment we can use the bootstrap classes now for 100 percentage height we can use this class display will be flex justify content at center horizontally line items at center vertically now finally let's apply a different background for this icon here now let's remove this hyperlink back to list which is not necessary instead of that we'll be using breadcrumb from syncfusion and also let's remove this footer from layout okay that's enough with the design let's move on with the update operation for update operation we are showing the form with the corresponding record details now when we submit this form we have to update the changes that we have made inside the form for the corresponding record so here we have the corresponding post action method add or edit so for insert operation we are just adding the category or model to the context now here we just need to add the if clause to check whether we have an insert or update operation we can check that from the category id itself if it is equal to zero we could say we have an insert operation otherwise we have an update operation so that's what we are handling inside this else block if we have an update operation we will do this context dot update method can be called into that we can just pass the category model independent of whether we have an insert or update operation we just need to call this save changes async method and finally we will return the index view let me build this and let's check whether it is working or not now in order to check whether this is working or not let me append few asterisk marks at the end submit the form it's not working something is not correct it should be related to the hidden field because that's the only change that we have made inside the form so here we have the hidden field and its value is category id which is as it is the string that we have passed here so instead of that just use this at the rate index model dot category id build the project back to the view now it's fine let's add few asterisk marks at the end submit the form boom that's it so here we have the updated category in next video we'll be discussing this infusion component grid along with that we'll be designing a page title for all the pages inside the application containing the component breadcrumb for more awesome videos like this please consider subscribing to this channel code affection if you haven't yet if you found this video helpful please like and share this video with your friends and colleagues